Hello there everybody, uh, Dan Calloway here again, coming to you from the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Um, today I'm in my Salient OS Arch Linux uh, distro on my laptop, and um, I want to talk about uh, a new uh, application that I've uh, installed on my Raspberry Pi Model 3B Plus that I have. Uh, you may have seen a previous video where I talked about my Raspberry Pi Model 3B Plus. Um, the application I want to talk about is one that I installed and it's called Pi-Hole Server. If you've never heard of it, um, Pi-Hole Server is a server that runs on Raspbian OS or uh, can actually run on any operating system you put on the Pi, but it, it, it's installable in Raspbian OS, which is the default Debian uh, distribution in the Raspberry Pi. Um, and it, what it does is it takes uh, and protects your entire LAN, your local area network, uh, your home network, uh, that is to say, uh, protects it from ads uh, coming in from various sources. And it uses block lists to accomplish that. Uh, so let me uh, get on the web here. And let me go ahead. I've got a folder here in my uh, quick dial called Raspberry Pi. Let me pull that up. And here's the Pi Hole admin console. Now I installed um, Pi Hole um, from this website. This is the official website for Pi Hole and it's uh, piehole.net. Uh, and as I said, it's a network wide ad blocking uh, application. It is wonderful. I mean, I've been using it now for a few days and it's doing a great job. Uh, blocking uh, sites that try to push ads to you. Now that's not just ads that you get through via the web, but that's ads that come through any any application that might accept ads. And it's on any device. Uh, if you set it up properly, and I'll show you what I did. If you set it up properly, uh, it actually protects, uh, you know, not only uh, Linux machines or Windows machines. I have a Windows 10 Pro machine. Uh, but it also protects your iPhone, your iPad, uh, your smart TV, you name it. So it keeps ads from coming in uh, to those devices. Now, this is the website officially here. You can do an install by clicking this install button here. That brings up a page that uh, gives you various methods for installing. There is a one-step automated install method, which is what I used in Arch Linux. I just copied this um, line of script here uh, and opened a terminal in Arch Linux and ran it with elevated privileges. Um, you are piping out to bash so there is a concern there of uh, not knowing what's running and they do tell you that here piping to bash is controversial as it prevents you from reading code that is about to be run on your system. I, I actually you know I, uh, I trust this particular code so it wasn't a big deal for me. Um, but if you have concerns about it, don't use it. There are alternate methods. Uh, one of the alternate methods here is to install using the clone your re repository and run method. Uh, there is another method here to manually download the installer and run it using wget and then sudo bash basic dash install dot sh. You can do it that way. And then there are um, post install things that you want to take care of here as well. And this is all covered on the website for Pi-Hole. Okay, very nice website uh, connected to, of course, to GitHub because that's where the um, code lies here for Pi-Hole. Now, Pi-Hole gets installed um, in Raspbian OS, as I said, uh, on the device itself. I've got a 32 gig SD card uh, that I uh, am using to run the Raspbian OS uh, on the Pi. And so I just went ahead and got into that. I did it remotely uh, from my Windows 10 Pro machine using VNC. I actually run, ran it as an SSH and SSH'd into the Pi, uh, downloaded the script and then ran that uh, in the Pi and installed it. Now you will be uh, Encountering several configuration screens that you'll need to respond to the uh, to the questions that are asked of you, um, and it's very easy uh, to do. Um, you just follow the uh, 
the screens and uh, you can get Pi whole server installed very quickly and get it up and running. And so that is uh, how you go about installing it and this is the support site for it. Here is again is the script I used. Okay, you can donate to the site as well and they uh, encourage you to do so because this is a free server that's running on your Raspberry Pi if you do have a Raspberry Pi and I have the Model 3B Plus. I believe this will work for the Model 3. Uh, it doesn't have to be 3B or 3B Plus and uh, it may even work for the Raspberry Pi 2. Um, but the Raspberry Pi 4 is coming out pretty soon so I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so after installing this, getting it configured, and getting it set up, one of the things that you'll need to do first, and it talks about that during the uh, login screens, uh, I mean the uh, installation screens rather, is you'll need to go up on your server, uh, for your router rather, and you'll need to configure your router to um, uh, set up your DNS server in the router itself, not um, anywhere else, you know, not the ISP, etc., etc. Okay, so here I'm in my router right now, and um, let me go to the LAN, and uh, let's get into um, the DHCP server. Okay, let me pull that up, and. Um, down here, there is a section for DNS server, okay? My Raspberry Pi uh, has an IP address on my network of 192.168.1.95. And so what you need to do if you want to make this network-wide protection for, your, for ads when the server is running, you'll need to point your router to your IP address of your Pi, which you've got here is 192.168.195. And then you can go ahead and restart your router. Uh, and that should work. You should not have to go to any devices and reconfigure anything. It will automatically auto-detect the new server uh, DNS address and uh, configure that locally for your devices. If that doesn't work for a particular device, you can go into that particular device and you can manually set that through your uh, network adapter. Um, I've verified on my Windows 10 Pro machine that this worked, and it did work. It changed it for me. Um, not able to get on that machine right now that I'm, you know, because I'm recording this uh, using Simple Screen Recorder and my uh, Arch Linux, so I'm not able to get on my Windows 10 machine to show you that. But you can just have to take my word for it. Um, haven't tested it on my iPhone or my iPad to see if that changed there, but I'm pretty sure it did uh, because it is being protected. And if you go and you install your Pi-hole server, what you want to do is it also acts as an FTL server and a DHCP server. I'm letting my router be my DHCP server, issuing out uh, dynamic host configuration protocol IP addresses to all my devices on the LAN. Uh, starting at 192.168.1.2 and going up to 1.254. So you'll want to turn the functionality of the DHCP server on your Pi Hole uh, server application off. You'll want to turn that off. Otherwise, they'll conflict. So I did that. Not a problem. So it doesn't act as my DHCP server, but it does act as my uh, DNS okay, and FTL. Working really well. All right, so let me go ahead and log out here uh, on my router and click OK and get off of that. All right, and once you install everything, get it set up, it's going to tell you what your IP address is uh, that you've set up for your Pi Hole server, uh, which is should be the IP address of your uh, Pi. It'll also tell you uh, what the password is by default. Now you can change that. I left it the way it was. But it gives you a random uh, random password, so I wouldn't worry about it unless you're just really concerned about making sure nobody else gets in. But once you get uh, get it all set up, then you need to go to the web, and you need to go to uh, this address right here. I've got a uh, quick dial already set up. 
It's at 192.168.1.95 forward slash admin. And that's an HTTP, not an HTTPS site. Okay. Uh, so you can just type in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash the IP address of your Pi forward slash admin. And it takes you to this screen right here. Uh, click the login button over here. And it'll take you to this administrative uh, login screen. I've already got the uh, IP, uh, the uh, password rather for my Pi-hole server embedded here. I've got it saying, you know, asking it to remember for seven days. Uh, of course, I've written it down somewhere where I know what it is in case I need to get back in after it's lost that IP or lost that password. Keep saying IP address. If you do forget the password, you can click this button right here and um, you can reset it. Okay, it's not a big deal. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the login button. And that's going to bring me into the Pi-hole server. Now, here it is. A great application. We're on the dashboard. Right up here on the left-hand side is the status of your Pi-hole server. Uh, all of these are green, which means it's active. You've got a blue on the temperature for your Pi because it does monitor the temperature. It says it's at 56.9 degrees Celsius. Uh, as long as that doesn't get above 70 degrees, 75, uh, I'll be fine. It hasn't gotten there yet because my Pi has a, a heat sink on it. Uh, if it does climb above 80 degrees centigrade, however, uh, the Pi then will back uh, down on the CPU from 1.45 uh, gigahertz to 1.2 to protect it, so it's not a big concern. Uh, like I said, I've got a heat sink on mine, so I'm not really worried about it. Right here, the load is uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.06, 0 0.04. That's at 1 minute, 5 minutes, and 15 minutes. Um, we've got four cores detected here. This is a quad-core processor on my... Raspberry Pi Model 3B Plus. Anything under 4 here on any of these readings would be acceptable because it's a quad core processor. It's one for every core. And so if you had a single core, it would be one, one, and one. It'd be four, four, and four here. So, you know, I'm way under the load for here on my Pi is nothing, okay, uh, for this particular application. And I've got other things running on my Pi besides uh, the Pi Hole server, so that runs 24-7. I mean, uh, uh, I don't ever turn it off. Memory usage is really good right now. Uh, it's at 19.0%, which is really nice, okay. Then you've got some things down here along the side. Uh, I'll get into that in a moment. Let's go across over here to the uh, right-hand side. and. You, the Pi-hole server right now, it runs off of domains that it blocks through what's called a block list. And uh, we'll look at the block list here in a moment. Uh, but the total number of queries with 14 clients on the network, which is what it's monitoring right now. So that 14 clients means that it's monitoring uh, my entire local area network. And it's looking at 61,366 queries that are being uh, presented to it that it's screening. Okay, and it changes dynamically here. Um, so far, it's blocking 1,070 queries that are trying to push ads to my devices. Um, so it's doing a really effective job. It's actually blocking 1.7% according to the Pi-hole server. And I have a total of 136,114 domains currently being blocked by block lists. All right. Um, through my Pi-hole server. So here's a graphical representation here uh, starting from when I set this up over the last 24 hours, okay, showing you the queries that are being that are coming in to the Pi-hole server uh, on the network. Here are the clients over time, um, okay, and the color code here is what you see. Uh, for instance, the purple is my Arch Linux laptop that I'm currently on. The local host is the blue. Um, the uh, brown here, or ye the dark yellow, okay, uh, is a uh, a device at 192.168.1230. Not quite sure what that is. And then there's a colon, and then there's a number past that, and that's the number of uh, queries actually being screened on that particular client. 
Here are the query types uh, in a graphical pie format here. Uh, this is the query type, which is A, IPv4. Uh, the blue here is A, IPv4 as well. Uh, the yellow here is uh, the SOA query type. Uh, and then the uh, PTR query type, 1.1%. Queries answered by is this graph over here, and if you go down the screen, um, the top permitted domains are listed here, and you've got the domain name, the number of hits on that domain, and then the frequency uh, graphically represented here on the right-hand side. The total block domains are shown here, so here are domains that are on the block list that are being blocked right now uh, by Pi-hole server. Uh, done automatically, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, here are the top client totals, okay, and then the top clients blocked only totals down here, okay. Um, let's go back up the screen, and here we've got uh, down below the dashboard link, we've got the query log, and that shows you an actual log of. Um, Queries coming in to the Pi-hole server by type, by domain, by client that it's going to. Here it's going into my router directly. Here it's going into my Windows 10 machine. Here's the status of those. And into my Windows 10 machine, these are being blocked. Okay. Uh, the replies and then the action that was taken here. All right, so uh, let's go on down the screen. Okay, nothing there. The uh, Long-term data is under here. You've got graphics, query log, uh, top lists. Let's look at that. Uh, this is the compute top list from Pi-hole query database. Uh, there's nothing in there right now. I need to figure out why that is. I'm not quite sure why. It hasn't presented anything there for me. Uh, I'm probably I probably don't have something configured properly, so I'll need to look at that. You do have two lists that you can manually maintain. One's called a whitelist. I've got my router. I've got Bing.com and ProtonMail, which is my email client. These are being whitelisted right now, which means that ads coming into Bing or ProtonMail Proton or to my router here are being accepted. Um, blacklisted. Um, you can blacklist various sites, which means you're blocking ads. DoubleClick is a notorious site for sending ads to you. YouTube is another one. Uh, you can either do an exact block for blacklist, you can do an, a wildcard, or you can do regex as well. And so this is a nice thing. These are all regex that I have set up right now. If you want to disable something uh, here, you can disable the Pi-hole server permanently or for 10 seconds, 30, you know, 30 seconds, uh, 5 minutes, or a custom time interval. If you're doing something and you want to uh, test it out, you can disable it without actually uh, shutting down the Pi-hole server uh, or having to restart it. Under the tools here, you've got some things like update gravity. Uh, what gravity is referring to here is that Pi-hole uh, sets up what's called um, block lists, and those are referred to as gravity. Now, out of the box, the number of block lists are seven, and so uh, the gravity there on the uh, out of the box for Pi-hole server is seven. You've got query lists, you've got an audit log, you've got the tail of your Pi-hole log, Okay, which means the last 15 lines of the uh, pi-hole log are being shown to you, and it's live, so it's increasing. All right, and here you've got the generate debug log. You've got a settings link. Uh, if you want to go into that, you can see that you can set up your Ethernet interface. It's looking at ETH0, pi-hole IPv4 address is 192.168.195 slash 24, which is the CIDR setting. Um, Pi-hole IPv6 address is here. The host name is the RASP i3b plus. And then you've got your versioning here for your FTL information. Your block lists here, uh, if I click on that, shows you which ones are enabled. You can 
uncheck them to disable them temporarily. Right now I've got a total of 11 in the gravity. So I've got 11 block lists uh, that I've set up. What I did was I went out on the web and I grabbed uh, four different lists uh, and added those to the PyHole server to give a total of 11 which brought my total up from uh, 121,000 up to about 136,000 domains being blocked right now. For DNS here, you can click on that link and you, you can look at your upstream DNS servers. What I did was I chose Komodo to be my secondary DNS. Okay, uh, You can choose whatever you want. Um, you can even choose Google or OpenDNS if you like for both IPv4 and IPv6. Uh, but like I said, I use uh, um, a Komodo product called uh, Komodo Premium Internet Security Premium 11 on my Windows 10 machine. So it just makes sense to use Komodo here uh, for my secondary DNS. So my primary is the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. Secondary is Komodo. For DHCP, that should be disabled and I do have it disabled because there's no check mark in the enable box. Uh, my API web interface here, um, I've got that uh, set up so that the temperature for instance is Celsius. Um, here's the reason I don't have anything in my top domains or top clients so I'll need to get in there and I need to check these and allow those to be set up for API settings. Um, for privacy, if you go over here, uh, it shows you that the DNS resolver privacy level is set to slow or show everything uh, and record everything. That gives maximum amount of statistics. I'm going to leave it like that for a while. I may back down later and not record absolutely everything. I got plenty of space on my Raspberry Pi, so I'm not really concerned about it at the moment. And then the teleporter is a really neat uh, feature here as well. Um, I can actually go out and export uh, my PyHole lists uh, as downloadable archive, which I can store up on my uh, uh, personal cloud, and that way if I need to re-import that back into my Pi, I can do that at some point. All right, and then here's the Log Out button. If you want to go down to the Help button, you can click on that. Here's an entire Help uh, section. It gives you a lot of information about the PyHole server, uh, the dashboard, the query log, the white black uh, and white blacklist, uh, disable enable, tools update gravity, tools query lists. Uh, you know a lot of information here. Very helpful. Uh, like I said this is an extremely nice application. It is blocking all the ads coming into my router right now. Uh, for all my devices out on the network and I'm not having to do anything other than activate it, run it, leave it running and forget about it. Uh, I will have to update the Pi, um, the PyHole server using uh, update dash Pi I believe is the command in um, if I SSH into the Pi and run that in the terminal update dash Pi uh, to update the actual PyHole server itself and then the block lists I've got a script to, to run to do that as well. Let me go ahead and log out. And let me get back to the screen here and back to the PyHole website. And I thank you for joining me today. And this has been a quick overview of the PyHole server, which is a network wide ad blocking server running on the Raspbian Pi Model 3B. Have a nice day.